Hello everyone, it's time for another video of me talking to myself in front of my computer. I'm gonna do another one of those videos where I'm looking at the next anime season and seeing what it looks like. And I'm gonna judge them by their cover. Apparently the last time I did this it helped people out somehow, I don't know, but uh... Yeah, let's do it. Akagami no Shiryu Shirayuki Hime. The story of the original manga revolves around Shiryuki, a beautiful girl working as a medicine woman who has red hair. Which is very important in the synopsis of the story. Which is very which is very rare in her country. But that's important because when she is proposed and chased after by the prince of her country, she runs away, only to meet Zen, the prince of the neighboring country. Finding respect for the young man, she decides to serve at his side. Oh my god, scroll better. Uh, she decides to serve at his side at his as his court doctor. Oh, that's it. Never mind. Get good, Annie Chart. When you mouse over, when I mouse over it, it totally uh, changes how the uh, wrapping is done because it shows up with the uh, scroll bar. Anyways, <clears throat> this one actually sounds pretty interesting because it's not like a copy paste generic synopsis, um, and uh, it's historic and a shojo. Good shoujo are hard to come by nowadays, so I have hopes. Well, shoujo in general are a lot rarer than uh, shonen and that shit. But uh, yeah, it sounds interesting, and I hope that it's let's hope that it's good. Aoharu X Kikanju. The manga follows high school student Hotaru Tachibana, a girl disguised as a boy. Sweet. Through strange circumstances, she finds herself drawn into the world of survival games by a host. Survival game again. Masamune Matsuoka. The two form a team from Aero, with Aero manga artist Toru Yakimura and Yukimura and aim to be the best in Japan. Oh my god, the oversaturation of survival games is just too is just ridiculous it's like the anime industry seems to be have taken the the that generic general well, that general idea and just start going nuts with it this does not sound at all interesting or unique it doesn't sound like it at least from the synopsis it doesn't sound like it has any uh, unique take on it at all except that it's has the genre of gender bender which is super unique too, right? That makes it special. Yeah, don't really have hopes for that one. Chaos Dragon, Sek Sekiryu Seneki. Well, that's a mouthful. Story, story takes place in the sparkling era, of era year 3015, where the great nations Donatia and Koran, like the Koran, divide the world into a cold war as they fight for supremacy. In the middle of this standoff is island country Nil Kamui, which has lost its independence. Uh, sounds very much like it's trying to uh, base these uh, superpowers off of real world powers. Like, they're probably just future versions of real world cultures or uh, countries right now. Um, but the Art looks pretty interesting, I guess, except for the furry stuff. But I, I don't, I'm not a fan of furry whatever. Um, but it, the, other than that, it looks, the, the picture looks interesting. It doesn't, there's not enough, but there's not very much there to tell from the synopsis. Uh, but it might be worth trying out. At least it doesn't sound like ass. Charlotte! Oh my god, this is an anime that I'm so... I'm really looking forward to with the... with the healthy optimism. Um, I... am real. I'm still really, uh... butthurt after the, uh... abomination. The, la the last... uh, key anime was a, a total abomination, Little Busters. I hated it so much. And I've loved every other key anime so far. And then Little B Busters came and just made me fucking... Just totally turned me around. I was like... I dropped it on episode 8. 
Um, every other key anime I've watched multiple times because I love them all. But this, but Little Busters just made me just was like fucking shit. JC Staff also helps. Well, they helped with uh, making it look making it bad because their production quality was ass, and uh, there was I'm sure that they had a hand to play in some of the stuff that was put in there. Um, well, wait, didn't didn't wasn't there some shit going on where they some like one of the creators, like one of the actual original creators from Key? said, like, uh, that they were going to be heavily overseeing the project. Uh, like, what was being actually being done with it. So then, basically, everything that went wrong was just all actually Key's own fault. So, was it really that bad? Holy shit. Ugh. I hated it. I hated... Well, I gave it a three for the episodes that I've seen. That I had seen. I had no intention of continuing it, but, uh, so I'm hoping, and this one's animated by PA Works, so I have more hopes, well, it's obviously gonna be, look good, because PA Works looks amazing, and Angel Beats is their best looking anime, is the best key, best looking key anime so far, and, uh, hopefully it continues with that, but anyways, let's read the synopsis. The story centers around special abilities that occur among a small percentage of boys and girls in puberty. Yu Otosaka uses his power without knowing others knowing and lives in a lives a fairly normal average average school life. Before him suddenly appears a gr- suddenly appears a girl now Tomori. Due to his meeting with her, the fate of special power users will users will be exposed. So some uh, I mean it's uh, it doesn't sound that great. Um. It's about a high school club. Uh, it doesn't tell you that in the synopsis, but, uh... I mean, Key is just one of those other... It's just another one of those people, uh, studios. Just everything is high school, because they're... Because they can't... Actually, no, Air is not high school, so... Never mind. But, uh, they like high school a lot, too, so... I'm just like, does it have to be high school again? But, uh, and then it, it has the part where she suddenly appears in front of him like, uh, so many other utterly original anime where the girl just shows up and suddenly he's whisked to a world of magic and wonder and fantasy. But, yeah. Doesn't sound quite like that, but that, the fact that she appears, just appears in front of him, that's what it says, uh, just kind of makes me a little uh, 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 iffy there. But uh, yeah, I'm... Apparently there's some... I've seen some uh, news articles where there's evidence and hints that uh, this is supposed to be related to Angel Beats. And if that ends up being true, that will be, make it all the more interesting. But, uh... And it's totally... And it's, an important part to know is that it's anime original. It's not an adaptation of a source material like every other key anime. So it's going to be totally fresh and new. Oh, and Angel Beast is, not also, is also original. but uh, And that one turned out to be very entertaining. But uh, hopefully this one doesn't suck. Because fuck little busters. I'm not... <laughs> My opinion of key kind of got shat on after little busters. But anyways, let's move on. Classroom Star Crisis. <laughs> oh, this sounds good already. A romantic comedy set in the near futuristic world about the troubles and tribulations of high schoolers on salary. The fuck does that mean? Do they have full time jobs? With aims to one day reach out into the stars, humanity has colonized all the planets in the solar system. The story of young high school hopefuls is set in 4th Tokyo in. A Japanese Martian prefecture. Iris Shirasaki is a third year student aspiring slash aspiring test pilot. Mizuki Sara is her peer slash mechanic, and Mizuki's brother, Kaito, is their homeroom teacher and the young director of the program developing their talents. So uh like all this is all this synopsis gives is uh a description of the setting, and that's it. It doesn't tell you what the story is, like what's the uh, initial incident 
Uh, and that's kind of important. It doesn't. It just gives you a setting. It doesn't say what's supposed to be happening. Are they supposed? Are they? Are they just trying to do uh, generic flying like colonization things? I don't know. <laughs> well, whatever. It doesn't tell me anything. It doesn't sound awful, so meh. Dragon Ball Cho, because there aren't enough Dragon Ball anime out there. Uh, Durarara X210. Second season of Durarara. The second half. It's just, it's just the second half. Don't care. I never cared for X2 show because I uh, thought the Durarara, the original series, was bad. Uh. Yeah, <laughs> controversial opinions. And they're still okay. So they're still fucking shitting out Fate slash Khalid, Linear Prism Ilya. There's still another fuck. There's more of the shit coming out. Are you fucking serious? Who the fuck? Ah, uh, fucking mouth breathers, man. Just keep fucking eating this shit up. Moving on. Gakko Garashi. The story revolves around four girls who decide to stay over at school. The energetic Yuki Takeya, the shovel, shovel-loving Rumi, okay, the who brings everyone together, and Megu, the spacey school advisor. However, through mysterious circumstances, the girls find themselves the final survivors of a zombie attack and continue to live at the school. Well, the premise actually sounds like it could be like a really dumb, entertaining anime if it was if it was very self-aware, but it'd have to be self-aware of how dumb it is. But the the picture promises moe. They're like 12, 10 or 12, and they're like moe blobs, very obvious moe blobs. So, um yeah, mm, gonna have to say this does not, it's probably gonna be pandering a lot and not nearly as interesting as it, or funny as it could be. Comedy isn't in the genre tag, so uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna be a self-aware fun thing. Gangsta, oh boy, is this gonna be one of those uh, ones where the, where Japan tries to mimic American culture and fall flat on his face. In the city of Ergastulum, a shady ville filled with made men and petty thieves, whores on the make and cops on the take. What the fuck is this already? There are some deeds too dirty for even his jaded inhabitants to touch. Enter the handyman, Nick and Warwick, who take care of the jobs no one else will handle. Until the day when a cop they know on the force requests their help in taking down a new gang muscling in on territory of the top mafia family, of a top mafia family. It seems like business and mayhem as usual, but the handymen are about to find out that this job is a lot more than they bargained for. Wow. You know, uh, the, uh, wheel of the worst, the best of the worst, uh, stuff that Red Letter Media does? This sounds exactly like a uh, synopsis that they would have read from one of the movies that they that they did on their sh on that show. No joke. It's just like the shitty sl schlock, like probably 1980s era American B flicks. So um, it's action drama and seinen. So it's probably going to be really dumb. And it's going to try really hard, but it's going to fall flat on its face and be really stupid. And it's going to be one of those things that's going to be an unintentional comedy. But that's just what it sounds like from the synopsis, because the synopsis is really dumb. And it sounds exactly like those really dumb B-movies. Gate Jietai Konochi Nite Kaku Tatakeira. Holy shit. A1 Pictures. Oh, good. Oh, look, I see a... Waifu bait with a um, elaborate gothic Lolita outfit and a big axe and cat ears. Good. That's good. That's very good. The military fantasy series begins when a gate appears in Tokyo's Ginza district sometime in the 21st century. From the gate pours out monsters, knights from the Middle Age Europe, from Middle Age Europe, 
and other fantasy-like beings, and they kill many of the citizens of Tokyo. This event is known as the Ginza Incident. Creative. The government sends a small group of soldiers from the Japanese Self-Defense Force, a replacement for Japan's military, as if you didn't know that, to the alternate world beyond the gate. Led by Otaku, Sho Otaku Soldier Yoji. Are you fucking serious? Otaku Soldier. Okay, they find what are that that the villages in the world are being attacked by a dragon. An elf girl who is a survivor from the dragon's rampage joins the group in their travels across the dangerous new world. What the fuck? Why does he need to be an otaku? Fucking someone explain it to me. I need fucking help. Oh my god. <laughs> I see otaku fucking bait in there. The girl in the background is fucking otaku bait. Very clearly. But, uh, yeah. This sounds fucking stupid. Okay, God Eater. Man, that is one edgy as fuck cover art. Or promotional video or art. Or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Far East 2071, the domain of the Mad Gods. In the early 2050s, unknown life forms called Oracle Cells began their uncontrolled consumption of all life on Earth. Their ravenous appetite and remarkable adaptability earned them first dread, then awe, and finally the name Aragami. In the face of an an enemy completely immune to conventional weapons, Urban civilization collapses, and each day humanity is driven further and further toward extinction. One ray of hope remains for humanity following the development of God Arcs, living weapons which incorporate oracle cells. Their wielders are, organ are organized into an elite force. In a world ravaged by mad gods, these God Eaters fight a desperate war. Oh my god. This is such a copy-paste synop fucking plot that I've... It's like a, it's like cookie cutter. You've, you've heard this before. There's like... You see, it's, it looks like Attack on Titan, ob very much so. And it's, that Attack on Titan ends up having a very similar uh, story. But, um... Then the, uh... There's all, all kinds of other anime out there, like Black Bullet that I have you can just insert like all these words or uh, put insert blanks in all of in all the names for like this life x life forms showed up like you just put in whatever name you want there just make up a name and then uh say something about mankind being at the brinks of collapse brink of collapse and mankind being almost extinct or some shit and then you say like one day, then they discovered like these uh, new special people that have this certain power, and then they just and then they fight them, and they're the only hope for humanity. It's this synopsis is really really generic, and it's ufotable, so it's probably gonna be over fucking rated as fuck just because it's ufotable, and their and most of their shit is edgy as hell. Generally good looking, but ultra edgy. Don't cut yourself. Himoto Umarachan, an anime adaptation of Himoto um Umarachan manga. The si sibling sent the sibling gag comedy manga centers around Umara, Taihei's little so sister, who boasts beautiful looks as well as a prowess in both sports and s school and sports. <sighs> However, Himoto, beautiful little sister, has a se certain secret. <sighs> Skip. Jitsu wa watashi wa. What? The romantic comedy centers around Arashi Kurohime, who had who has a crush on a cute girl named Yoko Shiragami. Shiragami just happens to be a vampire. Sweet vampires. One the fucking millionth vampire anime. Arashi cannot keep a secret, but he is determined to keep Shiragami's secret anime anyways. What the fuck is this? Harem? 
Looks like harem. Okay, there's a bunch of girls in the front. And a boring looking generic protagonist in the middle. So, yeah, it's definitely a harem. And the fucking art looks actually really bad. It looks like, like, like art from a bad hentai game. Um, looks like it was like the sprites were just copied and pasted out of that game and stuck on this, this picture. So, yeah. Uh, no. Jokamachi no Dandelion. In the story. In the story, the everyday lives of the nine superpowered siblings of the royal family are monitored by more than 200 surveillance cameras and broadcast nationwide. The people of the nation who are watching the broadcast will have the ability to elect the next monarch. The story focuses on, a on Akane, the third oldest sister, who can manipulate gravity. She is shy and desperately does not want to be caught on camera. Uh, I just want to say that the girl on the left looks like her, looking at her, just her head, she looks like a copy and paste character from some Kyoto animation anime. It just looks like it was just copy and pasted from a Kyo, Kyo Annie, whatever, just some moe, moe blob. Uh, but, yeah. This doesn't sound that dumb, but, uh, I don't know, it probably will be. It could go either way, really. Uh, it's not a generic premise, at least. But they, but knowing Japan and anime, it'll probably take the uh, easiest routes possible and not try to be creative at all, and it'll probably end up being just generic and forgettable. But we'll see. Kangoku Gakuen Prison School. Oh, God. Just looking at this art... Okay, let's read the synopsis first. It's by JC Staff, so, uh... uh Hachimitsu Private Academy was a revered and elite all-girls boarding school on the outskirts of Tokyo, once upon a time. But with the new year comes a revision to school policy. Boys are to be admitted into the student body for the first time ever. That's fucking original. But on his first day at Hachimitsu, Kiyoshi Fujini... Fujino discovers that he's one of the only five boys enrolled at the school. Their numbers overwhelmed by the thousand girls in the student body. Ooh boy. Is it heaven or hell that awaits these five in a, a parentheses unfortunates? Oh god. This premise has been done fucking a hundred times. But uh it'll probably yeah. It's etchy! Yay! Oh look look at this look at this fucking hoe on the front cover. She's got tits that are fucking like beach ball size. They're literally exploding out of her shirt out of her shirt. Or whatever that is. It's not even a shirt. What the fuck is that? But it's so ridiculous. Holy shit. It just looking from how this uh cover or how this art is arranged it looks like it's gonna be for the uh for betas that like to see them that want to see it themselves dominated something stupid like that or uh yeah now that's it that's basically what it's probably gonna be kusen madoshi koha kohose no kyokan oh boy the story is set why the fuck does so many fucking synopses start the start the synopsis with this story is blah blah blah? Can't you think of a more creative and interesting way to introduce your synopsis? Anyways, the story is set in a world where humanity, driven off the land by the threat of magical armored insects, now live in aerial floating cities. Thus, wizards, aerial combat mages who can fight the insects with magical powers came into being. Wow, it's like we just read this fucking synopsis just a few fucking anime ago. And this time it doesn't even, it doesn't even, it just, it's even more poorly written. It's just like, these, these want, these beings that can actually fight them just came into being. They just appeared. It was out of nowhere. It just, it just, it just it, well, it's convenient. Kanata Age is a young man who lives on the floating wizard academy city of Mitsugo, I don't care. He was once celebrated as the Black Master Swordsman. Wow! You mean like Black Flame Master? The elite ace of the uh, S1... <sighs> of the S128 special team. 
Yeah, he's the elite ace. Of course he's the ace. However, he is now despised as a traitor of the special team. One day he is assigned... Uh, that's probably going to be a source of crawling in my skin. Uh, one day he's assigned as the instructor of E601, a team that is, has suffered 10 consecutive defeats. Defeats of what? In combat? E601 has three girls. Misora, Whitehall, Lectia, and... Who cares? With one or two peculiar quirks. Oh, harem. Yes. Of course it's a fucking school anime. It's a school anime, guys. And there's these generic cute girls in short skirts. And this edgy looking motherfucker in the background. Oh my god. It sounds so fucking infantile. So juvenile. This, this sounds just like one of those throwaway trash light novels. But anyways. Monster Musume no Iru no Nichijo. Oh, I see tentacles and a girl in what looks like a... Uh, nope, never mind, it's not. Looked like a, like a school swimsuit, but it looks like it's not. Oh god, this looks really weird. Monsters, they're real, and they want to date us. <laughs> oh, it's an etchy and a harem, so yeah. You are, okay, you don't even need to read the rest. Do I need to read the rest of it? It has three fucking paragraphs of uh, <laughs> left in the synopsis. It has a long so synopsis for how fucking stupid it's going to be. Do they really need that that many words to tell me how dumb it is? Well, whatever. Let's read it anyways for shits and giggles. Three years ago, the world learned about learned that harpies, centaurs, cat girls, and all manners of fabulous creatures are not merely fiction. They are flesh and blood, not to mention scale, feather, horn, and fang. Yay, monster girl, monster girl fetishes and furries. Thanks to the Cultural Exchange Between Species Act, these once mythical creatures have assimilated into society... And they're probably all female, or at least they're trying, when a hapless human teenager, who's a generic as fuck, is indicted as a volunteer into the government exchange. Volunteer, quote-unquote, which means he's gonna be, uh, strong-armed into it by some stupid-ass, frustrating-as-fuck series of events that make no sense. Into the government exchange program, his world is turned upside down, a snake-like... Lamia, what the fuck is that? Named Mia. Mia! Not just Mia, it's Mia. Comes to live with him, and it is Kurosu's job to take... What a... Whatever his name. To take care of her and make sure she integrates into his everyday life. Unfortunately for Kurosu, Mia is undeniably sexy. And the law against interspecies breeding is very strict. Oh boy. Oh Jesus. Eh. Even worse when a ravishing centaur girl and a flirtatious harpy move in. They move in just magically randomly for no reason. What's well, a full full blooded teenager? Teenage human with raging hormones to do you mean hot blooded teenage human? Because yeah. Uh, yeah. That, uh, I don't need to I don't think I need to say anything more. Overlord. Oh boy, Madhouse. The story takes place in the year 2138 when virtual reality gaming is booming. Oh, God. Can we please stop trying to fucking copy paste the generic fucking. Uh, fucking. It's like. Uh, uh, okay, let's. I'll go on a rant about that after I read this. Ryog Drizzle, a popular online game, is quietly shut down one day. However, the protagonist, Momonga, decides to not log out. Momonga is then transformed into the image of a skeleton as the most powerful wizard. What? Why? The world continues to change with non player characters, NPCs, beginning to feel emotion and undoubtedly fall in love with him. That's probably exactly, that's probably all it means, actually, is they just fall in love with him. Having no parents, friends, or place in society. 
oh boy, that's just like every angsty fucking teenager ever. Just woe is me. The ordinary young man, Momonga, then strives to take over the new world the game has become. Holy shit! This sounds generic as fuck! Oh my god! It's like a fucking stupid mix of No Game No Life, Sword Art Online, uh, whatever that one is called that I don't care about. But yeah, this sounds generic and just trying to write off the coattails of other fucking game anime that also weren't very original to begin with, but they're about games, so they did well. Because people like games is about games, so I can relate. But yeah. Roka no Yusha by the studio called Passione or something, who I've never heard of. When the Majin awoke from the depths of darkness, the deity of fate chose six heroes and bequeathed them with the power to save the world. Adoreto, a boy who proclaims himself the strongest on earth was secluded among the Roka no Yusha, heroes of the Six Flowers, and he goes to the rendezvous point, but seven have gathered there. The heroes suspect that someone among them is the enemy, and the initial suspicion falls on Adoreto. Of course it does, because he's the protagonist. Um, and then what happens? Uh, this does not sound great, to say the least. Uh, let's skip it. Oh boy! Look, another fucking season of Sympho shit! Next! Shimoneta no Iu Gainen no Sonzai Shinai Taikutsu no Sekai. JC Staff! Oh sweet. It's etchy, comedy, and school. Good. That's very good. The novel's story is set 16 years after the law for public order and morals in healthy child raising what the fuck banned coarse language in the country. Tanukichi Okuma enrolls in the country's leading elite public morals school and is soon invited into the anti-societal organization Socks. By its founder, Aya, Ayame Ka Kajo, who is a girl. As a member, blackmailed into joining by Ayame. Oh, that's so shit. Fuck that. Tanukishi ends up taking part in obscene acts of terrorism against the talented student council president, Ana, for whom Tanukichi has a crush. Oh, God! It's so stupid already. It's gonna be one of those ones where this guy's a beta fuck and he's being forced to do things by this fucking cunt. And even though they're they hurt this girl that he has a crush on or are mean to this girl he has a crush on, and he's too much of a pussy to stand up and get his balls out of the vice grip and fuck this anime. Sore ga say you. The original four-panel manga centers on Futaba Ichinose, three, three rookie voice actresses. The manga fe features small but humorous observations of the voice actor industry. Hajime Mashite launched the manga at the Winter Comic Cat event in 2011, and the duo have released new issues at Comic Cat events ever since then. I don't care. Tell me about the fucking anime. It's probably gonna be. It's probably what's the three or five minute one. Probably dumb and pointless. It would be interesting if it actually gave some insight into the uh, the uh, voice acting industry in Japan, but uh, other than that, eh. The Idol Master in the second season, second se Cinderella Girl's second season, because every se every season needs a generic idol anime. Sweet. All right, last one to talk that's worth talking about is Venus Project Climax. I'll bet a lot of fucking mouth breathers will be climaxing looking at the picture of this fucking girl's half-naked ass. Venus Project tells the story of idols living in Japan in the near future. In this world, data devices and video technology have been pros progressing to new heights and people are abuzz about the new form of entertainment, Formula Venus. In Formula Venus, or FV, 
The chosen top idols battle in live performances with their willpower, skills, and all their experience gained. Mm. It's about idols, so it's gonna have lots of excuses for fan service and fan pandering. That's just how it goes with idol anime. Well, you can already tell what, that there's gonna be tons of fan service from just looking at this picture. You can see fucking Moe and half naked girl and generic girl with not much clothes on. But, uh, I guess it's not as generic sounding as it could be when it, cause when it comes to idols, but, uh, not great either. Probably not gonna do anything that interesting with the idea. Would be very surprising if it did, though. Alright, and that's my uh, look at this next upcoming anime season of summer 2015. Does not... It, actually, at the beginning when I was reading them, they it did not look that awful, but uh, these later ones in the list kind of turned me around and made the season look pretty bad again. It could be worse, I guess. Maybe. Maybe it could, it could always be worse, I guess. But... Hopefully those few that I am really interested to check out, like Charlotte and uh, Akagami no Shiryuki, Shiryuki Hime, those are the two ones I'm most interested in. I hope those turn out to be good. Um, everything else is either very, uh, there's either a bunch of red flags or uh, it's pretty much guaranteed to be shit. But some of those, some of those may surprise me, we'll see. Feel free to let me know what these look like to you on your first imp on your first looks. But it's not really fair to come back on this video after the fact when episodes have actually aired and say, Oh, you were wrong. This is actually good. Because you have more information than me. So yeah. <laughs>